Hello, Clive here, and welcome back to Ark Survival Ascended. So in between episodes, I actually did quite a bit. <laughs> a lot of farming for metal, so we do have quite a bit of metal that we've gathered. You can see all that wood that we've been burning. We're going to need a lot of charcoal for gun ammunition. You need to make gunpowder from charcoal and spark powder. And charcoal is like the hardest thing to come by. So we have a lot of metal we've gathered. I think we have enough to actually make the furnace, but we'll get to that in a minute. And I did do quite a bit of taming. So I'll just show a bunch of clips of me taming a bunch of stuff. And then we'll go through the tames that we got.
right, so this is what we got. Uh, we do have a Rex, which we tamed at 120. And here's the stats. The stats are terrible. Uh, I just got this one because it's a female Rex. And we'll probably need a bunch of female Rexes to get going on breeding. And we also got another RG, a really, really good RG. I believe this was the 145. So it's 209 now. And this one is, yeah, 224. So this one we got is a 150. I think you saw that one. I was heading towards the volcano and I happened to spot this one in the forest. This is um, one with a lot of health and a lot of stamina, 39 stamina. And this one has the weight and the melee. So 42 weight, uh, 31 melee, which is better than this one. So yeah, so we now have a breeding pair of Argentavises. And I'll probably work on breeding in this episode, so that's going to be good. Uh, we got like a level, I believe this is level 90 Pteranodon. You, mean, you saw the clip, so you know what level they were. So this is a male Pteranodon. We have two female Pteranodons, and we need a male. This one just happened to be in our base, and it flew in here, and I was like, well, I might as well just knock it out. And we got this Fiomia, which we're going to need for the farm. All right, so yeah, that's the tames. I'm gonna put these guys away for now, and we'll talk about this a little bit more whenever we start doing breeding. So we're gonna get into breeding, hopefully in this episode or the next episode, and we're also gonna work on taming a couple more dinosaurs. Uh, the biggest one's gonna be the Uteranus. I found a couple of really good Uteranuses while I was flying around, but I didn't want to tame them off camera because there's like a little bit more of an explanation for the bigger dinosaurs. All the bigger dinosaurs, I tame them in a specific way, and we'll get into that more in this episode, uh, probably like very soon. But at first, I want to make the last furnace or the, the forge, the big forge, the industrial forge. Let's see if we have the stuff for that yet. And a lot of farming, uh, crystal. We've done a lot of farming in. I think we need more polymer. Uh, we still have polymer left over from before. I did get a bunch of oil, so we need to get the crafting. Uh, yeah, we can make this. Let's make this real quick. And we need to get all this stuff picked up. There's a lot of stuff in here. I need to just clear this out. So yeah, I'm going to clear this stuff out. We have a bunch of metal and stuff. Let's just stick it in here for now. I'm going to have to pick these up, so a lot of picking up of stuff. We're going to stick the... For actually, put it in this corner. I'm not gonna worry about this right now. Let's just we'll mess with that later. All right, this should be done. Let's pick it up. And yeah, this thing is pretty big. Uh, you can see it's like massive. It reaches the ceiling, and it's even bigger than this uh, spot here. We're gonna unsnap this, and then we're gonna shove it in this corner here. There we go. Let's turn this off. This thing's annoying. Alright. Oh yeah, this is the forge. The, the industrial forge. And we turn this thing on. It produces a lot of heat. And this is really good to have in cold... If you're in a cold climate. Uh, like over on the mountaintops. Uh, this natural heat production is really good. But if you're in like a really hot area. Like in the jungle and stuff. This can be really... This can be hard to deal with because it's going to make you really hot. Uh, but we have a lot more slots and this thing melts, smelts metal really quickly. So we're going to be able to produce a lot more metal. I think that's probably all the metal that we had. Uh, we have very little left. We didn't actually use up all that polymer. Like it uses up the normal polymer first and it uses up this polymer. But we do have a bunch of metal. We already smelted in here. So from now on, once I get metal uh, for metal runs, I can just drop it into that forge. And all of these things I'm going to have to pick up and... Um, I don't know, I might stick the... Use these for wood. For charcoal production. But this thing really smelts charcoal really well too. So we might not even need this these other forges for anything at this point in time. I might just destroy them and get the resources back. And this thing by itself will 
smelt metal. It'll smelt the charcoal that we need. We're going to need a lot more charcoal. I still have not found a good long neck rifle blueprint. So we're going to stick with the crossbow for now. But once we do find a long neck rifle blueprint, or even a long neck rifle, uh, we're going to be switching to that pretty quickly. Those are just so much better at knocking out a tame than the crossbow. So now that we have our industrial forge, the next thing I want to do is going to go and grab those uteranuses. So I'll, I'll have to go find them. I have them marked on the map. And I think we have two of them marked on the map. They may not be around anymore. One of them, this is from a long time ago. This 120 male, and I believe we have a 140 female. Now this is a 145 female. So we'll try to find the 145 female first. That's the oldest one. If it isn't there, we'll go get the other two. And then hopefully we'll have a breeding pair of those as well. So before we head off, let's make sure we have everything. Alright, so I think I have everything that I need. So before we leave, make sure you have at least four behemoth gates and the doors for the behemoth gates. And then also make sure you have at least enough large bear traps for the number of dinos you want to go out and get. If you want to go out and get three dinos, make sure you have at least three. More is better. Uh, you can learn bear traps as an ingram, and also you can make them at a smithy, or you can make them on an RG. And of course, everything else that you would normally take when you go out and grab stuff. Let's see, I need to go mark these on the map. We're going to go for the one here, the one here, and the one here. No, not the Quetzal. There we go. We're going to go for the one far away, so I'll meet you there and we'll see if it's still there all right so here we are at the this is the 145 right here email uteranus and there's another one over here running around was oh, rex okay so we got a rex we got another ud up there lots of stuff around here what i'm probably gonna do is i'm probably gonna bring it to the beach and then take care of it there there's another megatherium and I was look over here looking for, oh, look at that, female, 145. <laughs> you just find so many things just randomly flying around. I think it's the best part of the game is just finding these random dinosaurs all throughout the game. Need to mark that now. 145, a female. Uh, let's, let's just do that real quick. Okay, so that's the 145 Megatherium. I'm going to grab that one later. So what we want to do is we want to down the traps. Uh, these traps are very, very big, but a Uteranus can fit through them. So what I like to do is I like to just make the, the traps here like this, and I'll snap them all together. Well, let's do this. Snap. Snap. So we're making a full box. But then when I get to this part here, I'm going to unsnap and I'm going to go to K mode here and just zoom out. I want to make a gap that I can actually shoot through. But it can't run through. That's kind of the, the goal, is just to make a little gap. Uh, that should be good. Alright, so now we have a little gap we can shoot through. I need to do the same thing for the other side as well. Let's turn this off. We don't want to follow. We'll make a little gap on this side as well. And the only reason I do this is because it's going to be really hard to shoot it if I don't have any sort of gap in between. Okay. Yeah, so they won't be able to get through this spot, but I can definitely fit through it. Hope I hear it running. Uh, there we go. Put the doors up. Put all the doors up, actually. Well... We'll put the door up later for the last one. So we need to take a trap here. The only thing you might have to worry about is one of the carnosaurs running through this. But you essentially want to get a trap in the middle. There we go. Activated now. And now we just fly through the uteranus into this thing. And then we get it trapped. The Carnos, though, we want to avoid. 
So if it's fighting something, we can try to get... Like right now, it's actually over there shoot, hitting something. That's the wrong one. Over there. The thing you need to be careful about with the Uteranuses is that they can fear you. If they fear you, that's bad. Because they will cause you to run away and cause all sorts of problems. So we want it to follow us into the thing here. They're pretty quick to... Rex is going to chase us. Let's kill this Rex, and then we'll get the Uteranus. Okay, it, it was over here. It just took off. Let's try it again. <laughs> Things having a hard time getting down this hill. Hope oh, it feared us. This is what we wanted to avoid, is the fear. But it did get on the hill, though, so that's a good thing. So let the fear run its course, and then we can grab it and put it into the trap. Alright, finally. There we go. Got another trap. And then we... It can't move anymore, so... I don't think it can do anything. So once we get into the trap, we can... Throw the... Door down, and there we go. And now it's in the trap, though. So that's what we... Aim to do. We need to clear the area, though, because I really don't want to be fighting other things like this. Okay. I think we're good now. I think we're clear of everything. So, this part's a little tricky, because we have to actually go in here and shoot it. Get its attention. Then we just uh, keep on shooting it, and hopefully it's, it aggroes onto us and it comes to the edge here. We can shoot it through the wall. Kind of the goal. Once it runs away, we're kind of fine after that. That's pretty much the process. There's not a whole lot else involved. Uh, the biggest thing is the bear traps. And this works for a lot of dinosaurs. It works for Uteranuses. It works for Gigas. Uh, they will also work for Brontos. Uh, it'll work for a lot of other things. They do have a lot of Torpor, so it's going to take a, a, quite a while to knock them down. Yeah, you just focus on the tail. And if you have a hard time getting these things down, you can also put the smaller traps around them, the smaller gates around them. You can box them in even more. Also a possibility. But once you have them trapped in a confined area with like the behemoth gates, there's really not much else you have to worry about. There we go. It's down. I might have hit him. Well, let's just track it and see if I accidentally hit him. Yeah, I accidentally hit him, so I need, to, I need him to wake up. When it wakes up, then I can uh, re-knock him out, so it's not, it's not a big of a deal. So I'll need to come back to this one. But it will take probably like an hour and a half to, to drain fully, completely. So, yeah, we'll come back and get this one. Alright, so here's the 140 female that we had earlier. Unfortunately, the male decided to go chase penguins into the water. And in that process, it wound up getting eaten by a megalodon. Be very careful with this one. This one was able to get through these doors, these small gates. I'm going to have to go and check, the, check on the other one before it wakes up. Just to make sure it can't get through those gates. I put the gates around it just in case, but... Still want to be careful with that. I don't look up how many arrows we needed, but I think we need a decent amount of arrows. But yeah, it took a while to get me this thing trapped. These canyons are really hard to snap. To put the walls on, a lot of places they won't actually um, box off. So it did take a little while. So I'm going to slow down here, just make sure this thing doesn't get too many arrows. Alright, we did knock it out, which is nice, and... We didn't mess up the tame, at least. <laughs> Looking at the health, though, the health is actually much higher than the health of the 145. This one might actually get the better health. 
Um, so I'm gonna have to go and get some meat for this thing. I do have to wait a while to tame it. So I'll have to let it starve out for a little bit. And then bring back some meat for it. And I'll probably like, wait like 20 minutes for it to actually be able to be tamed up. So I'll come back. Uh, I'm gonna have to go out to the other one pretty soon. And get that one as well. All right, I made it back. We do have both of the UDs, the female UDs. Well, if we look at these two UDs, let's see, we have this one has 42 stamina, which is pretty good, and 41 health. And this one has not very many good things. I guess the melee is the best thing about that one. So 36 melee, which is not too terrible. So with Uteranuses, you definitely want health is the most important stat, especially for boss fights. And then the next best one would be the stamina. This one kind of covers both of those. And then the third one would be melee. And then weight's kind of irrelevant for boss fights. But this one has better weight as well. This one really only rolled the melee stat. But both of these are female. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw these two in this little pin. I made this pin for eggs. We need to get this one as well. And hopefully I start laying eggs. That would be great. Because then I can start getting some kibble going. Because these two have the best eggs that you can get. And so the Uteranus eggs produce the best kibble, the exceptional kibble. And that exceptional kibble can be used on any dinosaur. So that's kind of the, the goal is to produce that. But we'll see. We'll see how much we get out of that. I haven't got very much out of the Therizinosaur yet. Alright, so I'm looking at the structures and the crafting. And let's see if we can make one more thing. Uh, probably this. Yeah, we should be able to make the industrial grill. Let's craft this. I am level 86 now. But I don't believe I can craft anything else. Let's see. Yeah. I do have access to the gas mask, so that's going to be uh, very important. This costs 100 Ingram points, though. So, that's uh, quite a bit. But we're going to definitely use this pretty soon. And... Yeah, let's show grill. Let's throw the grill down. It doesn't really matter where it goes, as long as it's getting power. Put it right here. Uh, it is powered. This thing also produces a lot of heat, so this produces a lot of heat. And this produces a lot of heat. And this thing, we can fill it up with meat. And this grill will quickly cook the meat. We do have two more big machines we need to make. Uh, one of those is going to be the grinder. And the other one's going to be the cooker. The cooker's level 88, though. We're at the point now where we need to talk about breeding because this is going to be one of the more important things to get going and it does take a long time to breed stuff and get all the stats on the right dinos so the first thing we want to do is we want to identify which stats that we want the children to inherit and how we decide that is based on what their role is so for instance if we're doing boss fighters Boss fighters, the only stats that really matter are health and melee. It's health and damage. For things like Argentavises, like flyers, stamina is more important. Or weight's more important. And then for like gathering dinosaurs, like the mammoths, then weight and melee would be good. So you need to identify which stats you want on which dinosaurs. And it depends on their role, too. Like, if we, if we wanted to breed uh, a fighting Argentavis, we would need to get one with, like, a really high melee and a lot of a lot of health. And then we wouldn't put as much emphasis on weight and stamina. So, for instance, these two Argentavises that we have, we're going to have to breed Argentavises. And the stats that we're going to look for are going to be the health, stamina, weight, and melee. So if you're on official servers, you're probably not going to do as many stats as that because there is a cap on the, how high of a level of dinosaur you can have. 
But if you're on like unofficial or if you're doing like a private server, then there's no cap. So you can actually get all the stats, it doesn't matter. There's ways to get lower stats onto other dinosaurs. And right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on getting the four main stats, the health, stamina, weight, and melee onto an Argentavis. So what we do now, now that we've identified the stats, those four stats, we need to see which ones have the best stats in those categories. So if we look at the female Argentavis that we have, it has 46 health, which is the highest, and 39 stamina, which is the highest. So now that we know that this one has the highest health and stamina, what we want to do is we want to say, throw it out, and then rename this to HP Stan. And I mentioned before, you can use the export feature where you can go to export dino and then you can export the dino into an app like the arc breeder app then you can import that dino and then you can get the stats from that dino and then you can change the name set the name to the stats so we know that this hp is 46 and stamina is 39. this is important because you need to start tracking the stats that you want to move onto the children and it's really easy to, to just uh, look at the parents and see what their stats are and then compare it to the children. So if you don't have the Arc Smart Breeder app, it's totally fine. What you then have to do is two things. The first thing you need to do that's very important is don't level up your dino. Put no points into the, into the stats because you want to get the pure stats that it has on it already. At that point, you can compare the two dinos that you have so for instance, these two Argentavises. And we can see that the this one has 3723 health. And this one has 2847. So what we'd have to do is we have to write down 3823 and then change the name to HP 3823. And then that, that would keep track of the actual the raw health set. And you could do this on official servers. You can also use a smart breeder app on official servers, like that's all possible too. So if you want to get just the raw health stat, you can do that and put that on the name as well. And then for the stamina, you can look at stamina and just put 1180. And the full name would just be HP, then 3723, or and then ST, 1180. So that would be kind of what you want to do. You just want to keep track of the stats that are the best that you're trying to track. So for this one, I'm gonna stick with the points on it. So 46 HP and then ST39. And all the children I have, I have to import them into the Arc Breeder app and then um, look at their stats on there. So for the male, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do what I would normally do. Let's do uh, export. Then I'm gonna import that and then I'm gonna create the name. And then I'm just gonna rename this to the stats that I wanna track. All right, so now that we have these two things named, so we have the HP, stamina, weight, and damage, I can now breed these. And so whenever we breed these, we want to turn on breeding, which is under behavior. It's the heart icon. And then do it on both of them. If you have multiples, you can do that same thing. Or you can just enable it, and then you can also um, copy settings to nearby Argentavises. So if you have like five females and a male, you can do that. And it goes to all the different animals around you. When you're done, you get this egg. It's kind of hard to see. It's like a little glowing egg. Pick it up and we don't, we don't want it to be on the ground too long. If you have it in like a pen with an Overraptor, the Overraptor will automatically pick them up. So these can actually be breeding like nonstop. An Overraptor will pick them all the eggs for us and hold them for us until we actually go and retrieve them. That's one of the big benefits of having Overraptors around your base is to have them pick up the eggs that you're breeding. So if we look at the egg that we picked up, we can see why we wanted to name the parents. And it shows all the parents' stats that we're trying to get onto the dino. And also, when we start hatching the eggs, it's gonna be important too, because then we can also see the parents that the baby came from. But this is pretty much it for breeding. You wanna make sure that you name the parents. 
either the raw stats, like their HP totals that they have right now, or their base points. And those are like the most important things. All right, so I went ahead and got two eggs. And now what we need to do is hatch the eggs. So you need, you, in order to hatch the eggs, the eggs have to be at a temperature to be incubated at. And there's a lot of factors that go into that, but it's mostly it's the ambient temperature. So look at right now, it's 20 degrees Celsius. It's probably gonna be too hot for an Argentavis egg. So if we throw it out, we can see that this egg is losing health instead of the incubation going down. That means it's gonna be too hot, and it even says that it's too hot in the upper left corner of that interface. So let's pick it up, and what we want to do now is we need to get air conditioners. And this will help us regulate the temperature so that we can throw these out. If you look now, that's actually incubating, and it says incubating timer, and it shows a timer of how long it'll take. So let's throw out both eggs. And this is going to be the next step, is to incubate the eggs. If you're breeding mammals, the incubation's done inside of the, the parent, the mother. So you won't require air conditioners for mammals. So it is more convenient to hatch eggs because you can throw them all down at once. And as long as you have air conditioners, hatching eggs is going to be much easier than having to breed mammals. All right, so this is the process for mammals. So I'm going to try to get these to like Ethereum's to get like a better male, the male's 89. They've already gone through mating, now there's a gestation period, and it's 31 minutes, which is about the same as hatching an egg of a similar level, maybe a little bit longer. But until the gestation process is done, it won't be able to mate again, which makes mammals slower, but the process, at the very least, doesn't require you to have like a big setup for it. So really, the mammals can be set up anywhere to breed. Uh, you can have like a special area for them to breed. It doesn't require any power. It doesn't require air conditioners. So that is one of the benefits. They can just be out in the open. So that's pretty much it for breeding. We'll get into raising the babies once we actually have babies to raise. So hopefully we'll get some Argentavises and some megatheriums that I can show off. But this process is very long and tedious. Um, it's, it's about luck. So I'll come back whenever we have some babies and then we can uh, talk about that a little bit more. All right, we're back and there's one of the babies right there. Kind of hard to see sometimes. I'll just grab it and there's a female. The one's right here. This is a Another female, okay. So we didn't get a male, which is fine, I guess. No, we really need a male, because we need to replace the current male. But if we would've got a male, what we could do then, is we could replace the current male with the new male. But if we look at the baby, we can look at the stats in this thing. If we go to show ancestors, we can see what the stats that we're supposed to get from this one. So we see the mom's name, and we can see that it's a uh, 38 health, 38 stamina and 33 weight. That's the stats we're supposed to get. So as soon as you get the baby, before you imprint, you need to either look at the stats, the base stats, take a screenshot or whatever, or you can just do the export. You can do that for both of these. And then you can compare the stats to the parents. But if you don't have the, the Smart Breeder app, you can just go in and you can take a screenshot and then compare that to the parents, whichever parent has the better stats, just to make sure that this, the stats are the same. So that's kind of how it would go when you're doing the breeding. All right, here's the RG eggs. So rough to back, I see we have a 229, which is gonna be better. Let's see. A 229 and 216. So if we look at the babies for the RGs, we have to go back and compare the parents. 
and we could tell that, let's see, this is a male. So as long as this male has the, the dad's stats and one of the mom's stats, it's already a better male. It is a higher level. So what we could do is we could do the export. So based on the app, the best possible combination of stats would be uh, 235. The 229 and the 216 did not inherit the dad's weight. So we can't replace the male with either one of these, which is unfortunate. So we're probably going to have to get rid of one of these. You can raise them if you want. Like if they were females, you definitely want to raise them to have more egg layers. If you do have ones that you want to raise, you will get this option to imprint. And if we hover over this one, it says that it wants to cuddle. All we have to do is press E and we get an imprint. So my imprinting bonuses are way higher. So your imprinting bonuses may be lower depending on what settings you're on. Definitely want to imprint the ones that you want to keep. And imprinting is just a way to boost up the stats of the dinosaur. And like I said before, you don't want to imprint them until after you have gotten the stats down. Because once you imprint them, the stats do change. So we see we have 88% imprinting. And the stats have gone up. So there's like a bonus to their stats based on how much you've imprinted with them. And they also get a bonus if you actually ride them too. So there's two bonuses that you get from imprinting. Imprinting's far more important on dinosaurs that are going to be in boss fights. Like it's a big part of their damage and their health. Oh, this one came with me. There's different ways to imprint. There is the cuddle, which is the easiest. You just press E. There's the walking option, which is what we're doing now. We have to have it follow us. And then it'll follow us for a little while, and then it'll imprint, and then uh, you'll be able to put it back where they started at. And there are other ways to imprint, like feeding it certain types of foods. And you do have to be very careful when you're doing that, because there might be some foods that you don't have access to, like certain kibbles. So just keep that in mind. Because raising babies can take up a lot of resources, a lot of food specifically uh, and raising a lot of babies at one time can be very very painful uh, especially on your food resources you can be doing a lot more food runs to get the meat that you need to raise them so a baby has to be fed hand fed until it reaches a juvenile which is 10 percent and that could vary depending on your settings but this one these guys are three percent so i would need to be feeding these things for a while probably like 20 to 30 minutes before they're ready to be feed from the actual trough. So keep that in mind. You're going to be spending a lot of time uh, feeding these things. And so having ones that you're not going to be using and, st and you're still raising them is not always the best option. And there are some babies that are incredibly intensive on food. And that's the bigger dinosaurs like the Rexes, the Gigas. Those are very, very food intensive, and you're gonna need to have a lot of food on hand before you can start raising this. I believe the UDs as well. You don't wanna to raise too many of those, unless you have a method to actually get a lot of food. So I'm gonna start raising these guys, and I'm gonna continue breeding the Megatheriums. They're almost ready to mate again. And I'm trying to get, I'm gonna to try to get one to replace this male, and I'm trying to get a better version of the female and the male version of the RGs. It's kind of the next step for raising these things, but I usually like to spend a little bit of time breeding and then take a pause from that, do other things, and then come back to breeding these things again. It's kind of the best method I find. Unless you have like a big group, and there's usually always somebody that's dedicated to just breeding stuff. That's all I ever do. Um, if you don't have that big group, that big tribe, then you're gonna be stuck doing this yourself. You spend a lot of time in your base just staring at these babies. Make sure they're good to go. Probably watching videos in the meantime. All right, so that's gonna be it for this episode. So we did do quite a bit. We got a lot of tames early on. Uh, some of those in-between episodes. We did get some Uteranuses, which are gonna be very helpful in boss fights. And we did start the breeding process. That breeding process, it's gonna take a while to get that to be completed. So I wanted to start on it early and I wanted to 
try to get that going while I'm doing other things. So it does help a ton when you're spacing it out. I did make another compilation of all the drops that I've gotten recently over this episode and even in between episodes. So I'll just show that at the end, but that's going to be it for the episode. I thank you for watching. I appreciate all the support and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.